Hey, Queen, good to see you. Thank you for being here. Good afternoon, Sister Deborah. Good to see you. Thank you for sharing. We're going to go ahead and get started with our noonday Bible study. If you all would like, tag, share, invite, do all of those things that we generally do when we come on the live. Share it to your groups, share it to your friends, share it to your Sunday school groups, to your pastors, leaders, share it to your cousin and them. We're going to go ahead with the lesson today and seek the heart of God to hear from, rather, the heart of God as we move forward in the things of God on today. I'm excited. It's Friday, and um, the Lord has been speaking, and I'm excited to hear what he's going to say to us. Lord, we thank you, and we just love you for being who you are. We honor you, and we honor your presence. We thank you, Father that you allowed us to wake up this morning with our minds still stayed on you, that we had a reasonable portion of life, health, and strength. We bless you, and we honor you, and we love you today, God. We pray, God, as we go forth with our day, that you will continue to cover us under your blood, that you will continue to give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, that you would open up the supernatural to us, that you would show us our enemies afar off, that you would give us strategies for today. And for the future, we just bless you again, God, for being God alone. We pray now that your anointing would ride on the live today, God, like it has not done in times past. We pray in the name of Jesus that your spirit of influence would ride on my words, that your people may leave better off than we were when we came, that we might leave, heal, deliver, set free, and have a desire to move a little further on down the road. It is so and so it is in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you, Pastor Swan. Thank you for that. May the blessings of God go with you into your 1230 meeting and God release all to you that belongs to you in his name. Amen and amen. Today, we're going to talk about the Goshen blessing. Amen. 
we're going to talk about. Yes, ma'am. We we'll, thank you for that, Sister Williams. Good to see you. Today we're going to talk about the Goshen blessing. For the last couple of days, I've been kind of quiet and and kind of reserved and trying to hear what God is saying for us. Of course, as we move on into the seventh month of the year, this this month of completion. You know, last year month. The Lord came and he told us that it was time for us to refocus on some things. It was time for us these last, the last half of this year to, to recalibrate what we would call in the classroom, to monitor and adjust some things, to make certain that we are going in the second half of the year where God told us that we need to go in the first half of the year, number one, or number two, to seek God about whether or not we need to change our trajectory for the second half of the year. God bless you, Sister Jean. Good to see you. And then God was saying, we need to recalibrate. We need to refocus. We've gotten our vision too far out here. And it's time to bring it back in because God wants to say some things. God wants to do some things. And sometimes we get so um, um, discombobulated about uh, in the vicissitudes of life and so caught up in what other people have going on. Oftentimes, we forget that God has called us to do a thing. You may as well say amen. I know I'm talking right. We forget that God has called us to do a thing. And in so doing, we put our little world over to the side and we try to manifest the glory of God for everybody else. We put all of our health issues and all of our personal issues and everything that concerns us to the side. And we try to make everything else happen for everybody else. God bless you, Sister Ann. Good to see you. So last month, God said it's time to get back. It's time to get back to the original blueprint. It's time to get back, Adam, to the place where God called you to walk with him in the cool of the morning. It's time to get back to that place where you're not trying to drag everybody else with you, but you're standing in the place saying, God, you know, it's me. It's me, God. You called me to do this thing. You didn't call anybody else to do it. You called me. So, God, I need to put my ear back to your heart. I need to put your voice back in my ear. I need to hear what you were saying. This is what Moses said. Moses said, God, you know what? I don't want to know about your gifts. He said, I don't want to know your ways. Moses said, I want to know your heart. God, God told Moses, even if you don't rain manna, even if you don't rain quail, even if you don't show us how to get from Egypt to the promised land, he said, I don't want to know all that other stuff. He said, but I want to know your ways. In other words, Moses was saying, I want to be so intimate with you, God that I know what you're going to do in the land before you do it. I want to be so intimate with you, God, that you share your thoughts, your dreams, your visions with me before you share them with anybody else. I want to be so intimate with you that even in my sleep that you reveal yourself to me as Jehovah God. Is that anybody's declaration that, you know, I got to get this train back on track? Yeah, I'm going down the line. Yes, I'm making some progress, but I could be moving a whole lot faster if I would just pay attention to what's going on on my side of the track and recalibrate. So that's what God told us last month. He said we got to get back in focus. So I'm like, okay, so now that we are focused again, God, where is it that you want us to go? He said to remind the saints that I want to give them the Goshen blessing. Bless your name, Jesus. He said, remind the saints that I want to give them the Goshen blessing. I know generally everybody that comes on Bible study is always some type of Bible scholar, and we know some about the scriptures, and this is good. But sometimes we can come to a place, amen, where we think that we know so much about scripture that we just kind of um, gloss past something uh, because we know it and we miss what God is saying. So when God is talking about the Goshen blessing, what he's saying is that Goshen, G-O-S-H-E-N, I guess I should type this in the comments. The Goshen blessing. Goshen is a place of comfort and plenty. Goshen is a place of fertility, prosperity, welfare, and security. Goshen is a place where God says, I need you to draw near to me. Goshen is a fertile land. So then a Goshen blessing is the abundant 
provision of God in a place where he's calling you to inhabit. Are you with me? The Goshen blessing is the abundant provision of God over your life in a land that he has called you to inhabit. Let me say this, that the Goshen that I'm talking about is twofold. Because in the scriptures, Goshen was a physical place. It was a physical place that God was calling the Israelite children to. But since God, uh, basically they did not completely receive that promise, Jesus had to come and die for the whole world, which opened up Goshen to be a spiritual place. Are you with me? So Goshen started out as a physical place, and it has come a spiritual place of blessing. It's a spiritual reality. Goshen, and we're going to get to the scriptures, Goshen is a place of separation. Goshen is a spiritual place of separation. It is a spiritual place that is set apart from the rest of the world. And in order for us to access Goshen, we must be willing to separate ourselves from the things of this world, my Lord. In order for us to access Goshen, we must be willing to separate ourselves from the things of this world. This includes to separate ourselves from sin, sinful nature, sinful lust, you know, our will, our mind, our will, our emotions. Remember, we talked about that we as people are triune. We are three, spirit, soul, and body. We are a spirit that lives in a body, but we have a soul. It is our soulish realm that is being perfected every day. It is our mind, our will, and our emotions that must come under the subjection of the Lord Jesus Christ so that we can live in this place called Goshen. Are you with me? Goshen, I say again, is a place of separation. It is a spiritual place where it sets us apart from the rest of the world and in order to gain access, we must be willing to separate ourselves from the access of the world. Let us look at Genesis 45, verses 9 through 11. Uh, Goshen was so separated during Old Testament time. It was a part of Egypt. But Goshen was so separate from Egypt that when the ten plagues came, Although the plagues affected everyone else, although the plagues affected even the towns and the cities that surrounded Goshen, the 10 plagues never entered the land of Goshen. My God from Zion. The whole world was falling apart except for Goshen. My question, do you want to live in Goshen? Everything else was going crazy. The sky was raining frogs and it was it was raining down hail and the Nile was turning to blood and, 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 and it was plagues everywhere except in Goshen. Because God had told the Israelite children, I'm going to separate you. I'm going to put you apart. I'm going to put you in this place called Goshen. And the things that the Israelites, the, excuse me, that the Egyptians have to suffer, God said, you're not going to have to suffer because I put you in this place called Goshen. Some of the problem, and I'm only talking to the body of Christ, some of the problem with the body of Christ and the reason why we cannot completely live in the Goshen blessing is because we've compromised our Goshen to look like, be like, feel like, sound like the world. We've given up a true testimony. We've given up the life of holiness. We've given up a life of loyalty to God so that we can do like the world does. You know, if you like it, I love it. God said, but that kind of attitude is not allowed in Goshen. Genesis 45, 9 through 11 says this. This is Joseph talking to his brother that sold him into slavery. Once he revealed himself as I am Joseph, your brother, the one that you sold, this is what he said. Hurry and go to my father and say to him, thus says your son, Joseph, God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me. Do not tarry. 
You shall dwell in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near me, you and your children, your children's children, your flock and your herds, and all that you have. There I will provide for you, lest you and your household and all that you have come to poverty. And there are still five years of famine left. Listen, Joseph told the same brothers that tried to kill him, the same brothers that threw him in a well, the same brothers that told his father that he was dead, the same brothers that were the reason for him being incarcerated for over 13 years, the same brothers that got him caught up in a lie. He told Joseph what had so changed his mentality, Pastor Swan, he had gotten what I call a, a Goshen mentality. The Goshen mentality says, I had to come to this place before you. God bless you, Sister Shirley, it's good to see you. The, the, the Goshen mentality for me says that I had to come to this place before you so that I could save you when you got here. Are you hearing me? Joseph could have been upset by all rights. He had the right to be angry. His brother sold him when all he was trying to do was tell them what God was saying. But because, number one, his brothers were not mature enough, and number two, he told his vision too soon, Joseph ended up in a place, but he had a Goshen mentality. Even when he saw the ones that set him up, hear me in the Holy Ghost, even when he saw the ones that lied to him, even when he saw the ones that tried to strip his anointing, his Goshen mentality said, in all of that, I had to get here before you. Joseph was basically saying, God had placed in me the ability to save you before you got here. He was saying that God gave me the vision to get you in a place before you got here, although none of us knew this was coming. The Goshen blessing is that God wants to hide you from what is coming, although you don't know what is coming. The Goshen blessing is that God wants you to be the one that saves your family. <clears throat> God wants you to be the one that saves your enemy. God wants you to be the one that lives in the place of blessing, although everybody around you tried to kill you. They tried to use your name. They tried to set you up. They tried to call you a liar. <clears throat> They said you weren't called to do what God called you to do. They said that all these things about you, but what they didn't realize was God was sending you ahead to prepare their Goshen. My God from Zion. <clears throat> there are people in your circle that will never get to Goshen if you don't get there first. Are you hearing me? <clears throat> this is why leaders don't get upset about your haters. Because you got to get to Goshen before they get there. Don't get upset about people that set you up. Because you got to prepare their Goshen before they get there. Because God knows, Pastor Swan, that your shoulders are strong enough to handle the warfare that those coming behind you cannot handle. So he says, I'm going to put Rachel in a position that's going to be hard. It's going to be difficult. She's going to have to fight the fiery darts. She's going to be asked if she's going to bow to the golden image. She's going to be asked if she's going to compromise. But I know that Rachel is not. It sounds like Job, Bible scholar. The word of God says that God called a meeting in heaven and the sons of God came. And here comes Satan coming late and he asked the question, so where are you coming from? He said, hey, I've been roaming to and fro throughout the earth seeking whom I can devour. God says, but have you considered my servant Job? Have you considered my servant Rachel? Have you considered Agnes? Have you considered the sons, the men and women of God? And this is what Satan said. He knows us so well. He said, listen, the only reason Job honors you is because you have a hedge of protection around him. However, if you move this hedge of protection, I know that he will curse you to your face. God said within himself, certainly I know that he will not. So this is what I'm going to do. He told Satan, I'm going to, remove, not, not even that I'm going to let you do it. He said, but I'm going to remove this hedge from around him. 
and you can touch everything that concerns him, but you cannot have his soul. In other words, God said, I'm going to wrap his soul up in Goshen. I'm going to wrap his soul up in this spiritual place. I'm going to wrap his soul up in this place of separation. And you can take everything else that belongs to him. But because I know that Job belongs to me, God bless you, prophet is uh, Yolanda. Because I know that Job fears God, because I raised Job to look like me, I know that no matter what you do, Job will not curse me to my face. In other words, God said, I know that if you take everything Job has, he understands that he still lives in a place called Goshen. Thanks to God, I think sometimes, and me included, we get on this rocky road of almost being blindsided by, by things that go on in our lives that we forget that God has called us to inhabit Goshen. So my study says that Goshen is called a secret place. You know, Goshen is that place where God says, I need you to come and lay your head on my breast. The word of God calls God, one of his many names in scriptures is called the many breasted one. He said, I want you to come and lay your head on my breast. It is in this place called Goshen where there's such privacy and intimacy with you and God that even if the enemy tried to come in and infiltrate your space, you let him know that you're not welcome here. You're not invited here. You may be in the room, but you're not coming to take my space. You may be in my husband. You may be operating through my children. You may be operating on my job, but you cannot have my peace because to give you my peace, it, it, it makes me to forego my Goshen. And I've gone through too much to let somebody else have my Goshen. I've been through too much to give up my peace. I've slept in too many dark places. I've had to shake too many hands of the evil one. I've had to give up who I am in God on too many occasions to give up this place called Goshen. Joseph had a Goshen mentality. And his mentality was, I'm not angry with you for the setup. I'm not angry with you because your lies put me in this place. I'm not angry with you because you thought that me being gone was going to give you my blessing. I'm not angry with you because you thought me being gone was going to transfer my anointing to you. He said, I thank God for this place. I thank God for what I went through. <clears throat> he said, because had I not gone through all of that, then I wouldn't have been able to prepare Goshen for you. He said, so instead of me being angry, this is what I want you to do. He said, I want you to go back and get our father. Go back and get our father and tell him that this word is coming from his son, Joseph. Can I tell you that Joseph in the Old Testament is a prototype of Jesus in the New Testament? So this is Joseph talking to his father. However, it is a foreshadow of Jesus talking to us. He said, go and tell my father this, that I'm alive and well. And I need him and everything that belongs to him to come over here to Egypt. I need him to come to this place called Goshen because God sent me to prepare a place for you. Wait a minute. That sounds like what God, what Jesus said. He said, wait a minute. He said, I got to go away. Isn't that what he said, Bible scholars? He said, I've got to go to go to go away to prepare a place for you that where I am, you may be also. Are you understanding? Jesus says it is it's necessary that I leave. He said, I could stay. But it would be more beneficial for you if I go, because in my going, what I'm doing is I'm requiring you to have to search for me in the secret place. He said, I'm requiring you to have to come to the secret place, to, to that quiet place, to that spiritual place to look for me. And if I go to this place, what I'm going to do is come back and call you unto myself. This is the Goshen blessing. It is that place of separation where you say, God, you know y'all sing that song. If I have to go, I'll go by myself. If I have to sing, I'll sing by myself. But then when it gets dark, God bless you, Carolyn. And then when it gets lonely, and then when you're divorced and don't have a spouse, but then when you're married and your spouse isn't paying any attention to you, and then when the church members don't want to honor you, and then your children are being disrespectful, and you're in a place of sickness, and you wonder, where well, God, where are you? Because you told me that I'm supposed to be living in Goshen, but I don't see you. And God said, you don't see me because you have not separated yourself enough to only see me in this place. You have not separated yourself to know it is I that 
that have allowed the enemy to come, but because I know that I have set Rachel aside, because I know that I have caused a Goshen blessing on your life, no matter what the enemy tries to take, you need to understand in your spirit, man, that you still live in Goshen. If they repossess your car, you still live in Goshen. If they come and take your home, you still live in Goshen. If you have to walk slowly behind a casket, thank you, God, you still live in Goshen because Goshen is a place where God says, draw near to me, and I will draw near to you. If we're going to live in Goshen, we have to see God aside from how the world sees him. And instead of having a meltdown, every time life throws us a curveball, you got to get back in the batter's cage and you got to keep swinging until you hit it. My oldest child, for some reason, he's a complainer. So when he talks to me about certain things, I just don't even answer. And he says, well, mommy, I'm trying to tell you this and you act like you don't even care. I told him it's not that I don't, I don't care. What I'm trying to get you to see is that sometimes you got to strengthen yourself. Sometimes you got to go back and strike and keep striking until you realize I can hit this ball. Sometimes you got to get up from a place of hurt. You got to get up from a place of soreness. You got to get up from a place of desper desperation and say, God, you call me to Goshen. And because I'm seeing everything else as negative, then I need to refocus my sight on Goshen. God, what is it in my life that is separating me from Goshen? What is it in my life that is stealing my Goshen mentality? Who is it in my life that I need to separate myself from because they have been sent to take my Goshen sight? Joseph said, I'm not mad at you. He said, I'm not angry. Because had I not gone through the vicissitudes of life, had I not been a foreshadowing of David, where David said, you know, when you, 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 you are, uh, uh, the Lord is my shepherd. He said, I shall not walk. And he talks about this, this green valley. And you got to go through the valley in the shadow of death. In other words, Joseph said, had I not walked through the valley of the shadow of death, I would not have understood that God is with me. Had I not gone through the barren times, then I would not have understood that he have a cattle on the thousand hills. Had I not had to cry by myself, I would not have understood that he's going to wipe away every tear from my eye. And only the word of God comes to pass in Goshen. God is only required to keep watch over his word while it is in Goshen. The word of God was never for the unsaved man. The word of God was never for the Egyptians. It was always for the Israelites. And when they would not receive him, the word of God says that he opened himself up to the Gentiles. He opened himself up to us. In other words, he said, I had a people that I want. You better hear me in the Holy Ghost, Pastor Tam. He said, I had a people that I wanted to bless, but because they would not receive me, I'm sending you to another group of people that is ready for you, that is waiting for you. They are looking for you and they don't even know that they need you. There is a group of people that need what you have, but until you leave alone the folks that don't want to go to go. They don't want to be separated. They don't want to live holy. They don't want to hear the things of God. They don't want to hear you preach. They don't believe in prophecy. They don't believe in the laying on the hands. They don't believe God called you to anything. God said, separate them from your Goshen so he can get in your hand what he promised you. The word of God went so far there in Exodus. Exodus chapter number eight. Verses 22 and 23, he said this. He said, and in that day, I will set apart the land of Goshen in which my people dwell, that no swarms of flies shall be there, in order that you may know that I am the Lord in the midst of the land. He said, I will make a difference between my people and your people. Y'all hear me? God said that when my people get in the place of Goshen, not only will flies and things not come and devour it, he said, but I, God, he said, I will make a difference between my people and your people. Oh, God. So let's stop going around and saying, you know, that we're all equal. No, God said when we, his people, live in a place of Goshen, he said, I'm going to make a difference. 
I'm going to separate my people from them. I'm going to let my people know that you have been set aside to live in this place called Goshen, but you're going to see calamity all around you, he said, but it shall never come near your dwelling. He said, tomorrow, these signs shall be made visible. In other words, he said, you've been waiting for it. Y'all been praying with God, when you going to show up? Well, Lord, how you going to show up? Lord, I'm waiting on you. This is what he said. When you get in the place of Goshen, tomorrow, the sign is going to show up. Bless your name, Jesus. He didn't say you had to wait to the next generation. He said, when you get in Goshen, I'm going to separate my people from his people. And tomorrow, the signs will show up. That's Exodus chapter 8, verse number 23. Thanks to God. So if you're waiting for your Goshen sign to show up and it has not shown up yet, that means that you haven't gotten in your place of Goshen, my Lord. You haven't gotten there. You haven't gotten in your place of rest. You haven't gotten in your place of safety. You haven't gotten in your place of supernatural provision because these are the things that live in Goshen. Your safety. There's supernatural provision. There's miracle signs. Bless your name. I feel the Holy Ghost. There are miracle signs and wonders in Goshen. There's growth and increase in Goshen. There's divine guidance in Goshen. There's protection in Goshen. There's spiritual growth in Goshen. There's encountering the presence of God in Goshen. There's learning to trust God in Goshen. There's drawing near to God in Goshen. There's experiencing the peace of God in Goshen, and there is being community in God, in Goshen. Thanks of God, if you are not experiencing these 12 things, if you are not living out constantly these 12 things, dare I say that you have not begun to experience the Goshen blessing. You are not living, we are not living in the abundance of our Goshen. I'm not talking about you are right this month, but you got to struggle next month. Somewhere you missed your Goshen exit. I'm not talking about you getting along with the saints today, but you don't like them tomorrow. Somewhere you missed your Goshen exit. I'm not talking about you honor your pastor when your pastor do what you want them to do, but then you show dishonor when they do not. Somewhere you missed your exit to Goshen. And the spirit of the Lord began to trouble me. And he said, go and remind the saints that I have a Goshen blessing for them. He said, go and remind the saints. God bless you, Elder. Thank you for that. He said, go and remind the saints that this blessing is standing out there for them. And it's just hanging out there in space for them. But until they get into a place of intimate separation, they will never be able to witness, live in, reside in, abide in the Goshen blessing. You can't be someone else's Goshen until you get the Goshen yourself or God from Zion. You can't be somebody else's peace until you find peace in your own Goshen. You can't be protection for someone else until you find your own protection in Goshen. You can't be supernatural provision for someone else. Until you find supernatural provision in Goshen. Let me say, so many people, God has placed in your life for a blessing too. And they're sitting around praying, God, send somebody to bless me. Lord, send somebody to bless me. Send somebody to lift me up. God, send somebody to do this for me. God, send somebody to do that for me. And the Lord said, you can't even hear that I need you to be a blessing to somebody. Because you haven't reached your Goshen. When you reach your place of Goshen, you're no longer begging for God to send somebody to be a blessing to you. You're saying, God, tell me who I can bless today. Because in your Goshen, you become the person that is a supernatural blessor. Not the one always sitting back waiting for somebody to bless you. This is Goshen. In Goshen, there's a place of plenty. You know, Bible scholars there in the book of Acts, where the word of God says that the saints of God sold everything they had and they brought their provision back and they laid it at the feet of the apostles. I know y'all don't believe in apostles, but the word of God said they laid their provision at the feet of the apostles and the apostles distributed out things to people as they saw fit. 
said in the word of God said that they had all things in common and that nobody lacked anything. Why? Because they were living in their Goshen. They were in their Goshen. They were in the land of plenty. They were in a land of separation. They were in a place where they just trusted God. Not in a place where they, they trusted him at 12 o'clock, but, but at 1 o'clock, God, I don't know, because you know you know, I need that bill paid by 5, and, and it's already 1, and God, I don't know what you're going to do. Lord, what am I going to do? Then we get ourselves in a mess when the word of God says, oh, no man but to love him. Because the word says that whomever you are indebted to, then you become a slave to that person. There's no slavery in Goshen. My God, Bless your name, Jesus. The Goshen blessing. The Goshen blessing is where the Lord says this. He says, I will be with you and give you favor in the eyes of the Egyptians. This is the word of God. The Goshen blessing is where he says, you will live in a land of plenty. The Goshen blessing is where he says, your flock and your herd will increase. The Goshen blessing is where he said, you will be blessed in everything that you do. The Goshen blessing is where he says, you will have abundance and prosperity. Not just a lot, but you're going to prosper in your greatness. The Goshen blessing is where the Lord says, he will make you the head and not the tail. The Goshen blessing is God says, where you will only be above and never beneath. A place of Goshen is where God says that you will lend to many, but borrow from none. My God, from Zion. The Goshen blessing is where he says you will be blessed in the city and blessed in the field. Goshen is a place where the Lord says you will, he will bless the fruit of your womb and produce in your own land. The Goshen blessing is where God says you will be blessed when you come in and blessed when you go out. The Goshen blessing is when God says that he will give you victory over your enemy. Thanks to God. God bless you, Prophetess Riggins. If you are not experiencing these kinds of blessings, dare I say that you are not living in the Goshen of the blessing? You have not tapped into the Goshen abundance. How is it, Apostle? That I can go to the house of God. That I can hear the preached word being preached. I can love God, but still not live in a place called Goshen. The first reason why is because you have a lack of knowledge. Sometimes we find ourselves in ministries and around people who choose not to give us the full counsel of God. They feed us what they want us to have, thereby making us dependent on them to get our next meal. But your lack of knowledge will keep you in a place of ignorance so long that you won't be able to understand the fullness of God's word. This is not me. This is the word of God. He says that my people perish for a lack of knowledge. So in order to go into your place of Goshen, you first got to make yourself knowledgeable in the things of God. See, we know the things of the world. You know to go get your nails done every two weeks. You know to keep your hair done. You know to keep your face made up. You know to bathe and change your clothes. But And these are things that, that are, are taught and trained in us. But what happens that we lack this training in the things of God? When the word of God explicitly says, train up a child in the way that he should go. This is what I understand. The reason why we lack this training is because somewhere we have been, been, been bamboozled to believe that training up a child means a physical child. That's one type of training. But when you come to God, you are a spiritual child. You need spiritual parents. According to the book of Ephesians chapter number six, you need spiritual parents. This is why the word of God says, obey your parents in the Lord for this is right. It is your spiritual parents that give you the wisdom, the knowledge, and the understanding to grow in the grace and the knowledge of God. The reason why you can't get in Goshen is because you lack knowledge. Number two is because you have fear. People are afraid that if they let loose of the world, that God going to require too much. 
Can I tell you, thanks to God, that the world requires more than God ever will? My God from Zion. Because when you lock arms with the world and you don't get in step with them, they will kill everything concerning you. But when you get in rhythm with God, even when you walk out of order, because he is a God that allows you choice, God will let you run your race until you come to the end of yourself. And at the end of yourself, you will find God. Amen, Pastor Sam. So because you are, in her words, afraid of accountability, we don't want to get in relationship with God and God's people. Because the moment you get in relationship with God's people and you find yourself a leader that is going to make you accountable, you're going to get, going to get confused as to whether their accountability is love or if it's control. Because we are so confused by the world controlling us when we come into a true house of worship. And the man and woman of God up front begins to tell us how to do better and how to live better. We control love. We confuse love with control. Authority. Authority can either look like it's coming from a place of love or a place of control. Your leaders have authority over you in God, and it comes from a place of love. For example, holistic sprays team. They know that they can't wear short skirts if they have praise team. They know that they can't wear short skirts if they're working the altar. Because if you bend over, it's going to be a problem. The world says, oh, that's control. I couldn't go to your church because my pastor's not going to tell me what to wear. But the moment you turn over and the spirit of God fall on you and your skirt come up, then it's going to be another problem. So instead of letting wisdom lead you through love, you let accountability sound like it's control. When all God wants to do is cover you in all things. Okay, so you don't believe. The word of God says that after Adam and Eve sinned against God, that they hid from God, God came through the garden. He said, Adam, where are you? He said, I, I, I heard you coming. God, I heard you coming. He said, so I hid myself because I'm naked and I heard you coming. God said, who told you that you were naked? He said, did you eat from the fruit? So he went on and he went on and he had this discourse with Adam. Then the word of God said the first sacrifice happened to cover Adam. God himself killed a lion. He killed a lion to use the skin of a lion to cover Adam so that Adam's nakedness would not be shown and that he would not be embarrassed. If God did that, because he loved Adam, how much more do leaders who are coming out of a vein of love do when we try to correct you in love? Remember, you can't see Goshen because there's a lack of knowledge and there's fear. The third reason why is because you don't believe it. Some people are so used to robbing Peter to pay Paul, they don't believe that they can live in a place where God supplies all of your needs. They don't believe that they can live in a place where there is no lack. They don't believe that they can live in a place where God is really going to do what he said he's going to do because they don't believe it, which means that there's a lack of faith. Thanks to God, in order for you to get in your place called Goshen, I got about two minutes, in order for you to get in your place called Goshen, you've got to overcome the lack of knowledge, the fear of, of, of um, accountability and your lack of faith. God desires that we live in Goshen so that we can live in a place of abundance, spiritual abundance, a place of safety, a place of provision. God wants us to live in a place where he becomes king of that kingdom where it becomes his responsibility to provide for you. And you don't have to worry about where the provision is coming from. All you have to do is trust in God. I'm reminded of being a, a young girl and my grandmother and them used to sing that song and maybe they still sing it. They said, I will trust in the Lord until I die. I'm going to treat everybody right until I die. Yeah, I'm going to trust in the Lord. She said, I'm going to trust in the Lord I'm going to trust in the Lord until I die. Where is that declaration today, saints of God? Where is our declaration that we're going to trust God when everything else fails? Where is our declaration that I'm going to trust him even when I can't trace him? 
Where is our declaration that my bank account is not where my trust account is? Where is our declaration that what the God, what, what the doctor said about me is not what I believe? Where is our declaration that I choose to live in a place called Goshen? Today, the Lord brought me on to remind you, saints, that he desires you to have the Goshen blessing. That Goshen has been prepared for you. And that although Egypt around you and Babylon around you is falling, God says that Goshen will stand forever. That the secret place called Goshen will be there forever. Question is, do you want to go? Do you want to live in a place called Goshen? Do you want to reside in a place in the earth where you never have to worry about if God going to do it because you know that he will. I know, I know the church tells you in order to get to that place, you got to die. That's not what the scripture says. The scriptures there in Genesis 45, Joseph told his brothers, go get our father and bring him here. His father wasn't dead. He said, go get him and bring him here and tell him to bring everything that concerns him. Because he's going to live in Goshen. Joseph says, and it's in Goshen where I'm going to provide for you. Remember, Joseph is an archetype of Jesus. Jesus says, when you get in Goshen, I'm going to provide your every need. He said, according to my riches in glory through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Say to God. So be blessed today, knowing that there is a Goshen blessing waiting for you. All you have to do is tap into it. Tap into it through knowledge, through understanding, and through faith. Trust God. Even if you have to affirm your trust in him every day out of your mouth, trust him till you get to a place that nobody can steal what you know to be true in God. It's a place called Goshen. It's the Goshen blessing. It's the Goshen mentality where God desires for you to have the abundant provision of him in a place called Goshen. Amen. That is the word of God for the people of God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Say to God, thank you for joining me this afternoon. My prayer is that you were blessed by the word. My prayer is that the blessings of God will come from behind you and overtake you. My prayer is that God will give you the strength to put your foot on the enemy's head and that he will give you vision to see your enemies from afar off. My prayer is that today you will spend time finding yourself in a place called Goshen. It is so in Jesus' name. Until next time, saints, be blessed of God, knowing that God has prepared your Goshen. Go walk ye therein, in Jesus' name. Amen.